time for Space Watch now. The US President Donald Trump is pushing to maintain American space superiority, signing an executive order to bolster the industry. Among its goals, we're told, building a permanent base on the moon by the end of the decade. Joining me live now, Dr Brad Tucker, astrophysicist and cosmologist with the Australian National University. Brad, great to see you. A Christmas shirt and all, I love it. President <laughs> Trump has his sights with this one, it seems, on space superiority. I, I think I'm branding this... Make the moon great again. I'm surprised he hasn't exactly. said that already. <laughs> it's something like that. And, you know, it, the, the interesting thing about it is there, there's a little bit unclear in the specifics of this. And some of this is already stuff that's been announced. What it really, I guess, is more showing is it hasn't been forgotten about. There's a lot of been discussion given that's taken a year to get a NASA administrator. Uh, Jarek Isaacman was only um, approved and, and, and sworn in uh, last week. Um, but really, I guess, promising to uphold that there is a commitment to get back to the moon and stay at the moon. Now, this has always been, as I said, NASA's plan for quite a while, but with a lot of the cuts mm -hmm. that have happened in the U.S., it's been uncertain whether that was going to be a priority with the private companies. Um, so it's good to see, I guess, the current administration still continuing to this. 2028 was always also the, pro the timeline to get back to it. I think the big question is, will there be funding and support to make that a reality given there's some debate about whether yeah. the U.S. will be there or not. We saw another frontier broken over the weekend, the first wheelchair user to enter space, Brad. Yeah, um, so on one of these Blue Origin kind of tourist flights, uh, a German engineer who uh, is paraplegic uh, was the first person to go into a, a, and reach kind of space. Now, ESA has actually already had a, a professional astronaut in the training corps who also is paraplegic, uh, and the, the interesting thing about this is, and there's a big growing reason, is um, they actually uh, are, 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 everything's normal up there. Uh, because of microgravity, mm -hmm. you're kind of floating around. There, there is no need. No one can walk in space, so to speak. Uh, and there's actually potentially a lot of health benefits. There's a huge amount of health problems that we get with um, the loss of bone density and calcium buildup, blood loss and blood flows, blood distribution. Uh, people who are uh, paraplegic on Earth have a different adaptation to these things and actually may benefit and be a better astronaut candidate um, than those who are not. Mm. So it's a big step forward uh, in terms of understanding space medicine as well as future space travel. And we saw another milestone, a moment for milestones. It seems the Hubble Space Telescope capturing asteroids colliding around a neighbouring star system for the first time. Yeah, and this is quite cool because we know in the early solar system, when our solar system forms, other star system forms, it's quite chaotic. We think of that we have eight or nine, depending on your view of Pluto planets. Um, it, it wasn't always like that. It was really turmoil. So there was a lot of planets forming and coming together and breaking apart. So these asteroids, which were about 60 kilometers wide, saw them actually crash and create this debris field. And so these were these are asteroids by our definition, but we think a lot of planets formed by these chunks of rocks coming together and some of them come together and merge to form bigger, others annihilate each other. So we're really seeing kind of the, the uh, evolution of how planets around stars form. So really kind of exciting to see the, the growing phase of solar systems, things that we don't really get a lot of insight in and really caught this one purely by chance, but a good chance then nonetheless. <laughs> Yeah, a good, better, good chance is always better than a, a bad chance, isn't it? And the final one, Brad, today, Earth had a visitor over the weekend, a comet supposedly close in space terms, just 270 million kilometres away. Tell us about that. Yeah, this is one everyone's been watching, Comet 3i Atlas, this potentially believed alien spaceship, but it's not an alien spaceship. <laughs> um, this is a, uh, an interstellar comet, an object that has travelled from a different star system and, is, as you said, made its for our definition, close approach at 270 million kilometres. This is only the third time we've ever had an object like this, and 3i Atlas was caught really early, so lots of attention has been paid to this object. So a lot of telescopes over the weekend were studying it to gather as much detail as possible, because, again, even though it's not that close for a lot of people, it was a lot easier for telescopes around Earth or on Earth to observe as well. Uh, so gathering as much data to study how are comets formed, how do they relate to this comets in our own solar system, 
Uh, and whether these sorts of uh, objects and this solar system it came from have the ingredients for life. So lots of information to be gained over the weekend when it was a fairly worldwide effort to study its uh, close approach. Dr. Brad Tucker, we always appreciate you making space so approachable for us and dramatic some weeks. Merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us.